Hi, I'm Ed Craig, Chair of the IGES Emergency Communication and Response Advisory Committee. The goal of the committee is to understand the needs of the public safety and first responder community and specifically how those needs can be addressed by emergency communications and response technologies. The committee is made up of a diverse set of individuals that come not only from industry, but also are practitioner field, in their fields as well. Through this diversity, we're better able to understand uh, what exists today, what processes are in place, and what the needs are of the emergency communication centers and how technology may assist them. Uh, we're looking at not just technology gaps, but also gaps that may exist within process, gaps that may exist from a budget perspective, and where state and federal laws may also impact or provide barriers to implementing change. I'm sure you can imagine that this is a very wide area, uh, the committee stood up a working group uh, this year whose focus was to look at the challenges associated with creating a distributed emergency communication center. The movement of people from one central location out to a distributed environment uh, created some challenges and issues that I don't think anybody was fully aware of and fully prepared to deal with. Uh, the working group spent time interviewing different agencies, understanding those challenges, understanding those needs, and understanding those impacts, and are publishing a white paper here very shortly that will summarize those key challenges and put together uh, some suggestions uh, for future enhancements and best practices and lessons learned. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work uh, with the community and to further our mission uh, as this next year progresses. Hello, this is Bob Turner. I'm the chair of the LAAC, or Law Enforcement Advisory Committee for IGES. Uh, in terms of status, in terms of what we're doing, uh, have done in 2020 and what we're doing in 2021, certainly everyone's had the challenges with COVID and there's no need to really go in and revisit the, those issues again. Really, like most committees, we have three major areas that we are working on. First area is the RMS standards effort, which uh, certainly Maria will have talked to you about or will be talking to you about during your presentations today. Uh, that's been really probably one of our major efforts and probably one of the one that we're proudest of in terms of a, a advisory committee. Um, you know, this is where we are revamping the original Let's See documents from 2003 with a minor refresh in 2009. This is going to be significant in terms of helping our constituencies, constituency relative to our members within IGES, especially those who are in the CAD and RMS space. The RMS space providers are really the ones that are in the most significant um, benefit from this because often I hear many of them complain to me about the issues of dealing with those old documents and being the go-to uh, place that many, many consultants in the industry go to write RFPs. So we really expect that this uh, document will be transformative and allow us to change what's going on. Second area is LITTF, Law Enforcement Image Technology Task Force, their work on digital evidence. Uh, right now, that's probably our next really big area since uh, RMS standards is going to be winding down. Uh, digital evidence is really looking at how we are going to come up with back best practices and recommendations for capturing evidence such that it will stand up in a court of law. We've already reached out to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Courts Advisory Committee. We had a meeting with uh, Joe Wheeler late last week week where we talked about this effort and you know how they could assist us we're still trying to scope what the nature of our activity is but I think we're starting to get a really good handle our groups already put together a good life cycle diagram of understanding digital evidence and its history and we've vetted it with the courts advisory committee I think we've done some really good conversation with them our last area is the CAD RMS interoperability area. This area has kind of uh, gone through a rejuvenation in an attempt to, to really kill it, uh, to be honest with you. Um, the past chair, Scott Pate, uh, my business partner, had run it for the last uh, year or so, really was at a point where he had questions about the viability of it. You know, We brought it forward to our advisory committee, as well as to uh, get some help from uh, ICPC, just committee with Bonnie Locke. And uh, lo and behold, we've got a number of practitioners who are willing to help out. And more importantly, DHS has taken a direct interest in what we're doing, not even realizing there was an issue. And really what we're trying to do here is define standard uh, interchanges for CAD systems to uh, provide closeout information on calls for service to an RMS, as well as being able to have standardized inquiries for standard queries such as name, date of birth, and vehicles and such information into the, uh, into the RMS. 
Uh, these are really all areas that I think are key importance, and I think they're really fundamental and, and really go to improving uh, the systems and the technology for law. Hello, my name is Anil Sharma, and I'm the chair of the IGES Technology and Architecture Advisory Committee, the ITAC. My co-chair, Colin Evans, and I jointly manage the ITAC. The mission of the ITAC is to provide information to our industry and practitioner regarding technologies, architectures, and standards that enable the successful adoption of technology and sharing of information and or in enterprise use of information. The committee focus is on topics that are innovative and emerging and not universally understood within the public sector community. As one might imagine, the ITAC is a mission support community. Last year, we successfully published the technology adoption white paper in December, and we continue to work the technology spotlight blog series and publish the first blog entry on rapid DNA. Additionally, we began work on the post COVID-19 successes, challenges and recommendation white paper. Our, la our work last year was limited severely by the COVID issues that we all are faced with. We had a challenging year to say the least. This year, our plan is to present at five to seven events on the topics of artificial intelligence, blockchain, and other emerging technologies, issue a monthly blog entry to the Spotlight blog series, continue, continue collaboration with other com committees on deliverables such as the COVID post-19 white paper. Um, we're also scoping the possibility of standing up an AI task force as the AI issues are becoming more and more germane to our community. Thank you for your time and thank you for attending the IGES Symposium.